Wow, thank you so much for the opportunity. You know how you say, if you look around you and you notice people are on the honorary disc, it means if they're honorary, you're on the honorary disc? I have four members of my family who are struggling with moderate to severe mental health issues. Do I need to worry about anything? I'm asking the dead guys. <laughs> so let's talk in case you haven't heard about what we're talking about, about these discs. When we talk about being in the receptive mode, we mean being tuned in, tapped in, turned on. We mean flying high, feeling good, feeling elation and clarity and happiness and joy and appreciation. That's a vibrational point of attraction that when you are feeling those things, what you are then receptive of are things like that. That's how you receive your source energy. That's how you receive your inner being. But let's say that something has happened and you're feeling vulnerable or like there's some injustice that's happened and you're really feeling ornery about it. People write letters to Esther. They don't know what the word ornery is. Apparently it's a much older word than this society understands. <laughs> it just means cranky and cantankerous and just looking for something to pick a fight about. And so if you're feeling like that, then when you look around, often you notice that the people around you seem to be feeling like that too. And it isn't because you turned them into that. It means you met them there. Well, the important thing about understanding about law of attraction is that you didn't create your family. You didn't create their reality. You didn't cause them to be who they are. But sometimes you live similar life experiences. And so sometimes you turn out in similar ways. You don't need to, but often you do because you are observing the same surroundings and often talking about them a lot. And so you are inciting in one another similar vibrational frequencies. It's sort of like once the ball gets rolling, let's say you have a, a negative vibration, negative feeling vibration going on and you're not aware of it because you don't know about the power of your emotions. So you don't do anything about shifting it or changing your focus or trying to feel better. So it just gets worse and worse and worse until it becomes a manifestation. Well, once a manifestation has occurred, it's more difficult not to notice it. So there's just a perpetuation of, I felt Henri and here's the reason. And so I'm Henri and now I've manifested this and now I've manifested this, I'm even more Henri. And now I'm ornery and now I've manifested this and now I've manifested this. I'm even more ornery. So it's logical, isn't it? That people are observing and what they are observing then is affecting their vibration. But the key, that's why we began talking about unconditional alignment, not letting the conditions that surround you be the reason that you offer the vibration that you do. So when you are born into families, you're not, in other words, there is so much fact or documentation offered by medical community and scientists where they want to say if this is happening to this member of your family then it's likely to happen to you and the reason that they come to those conclusions is because they gather the statistics and they find the factual evidence that there are these trends but they don't understand what the vibrational basis of those trends are it's as simple as this it's hard to not notice something that lives in your house it's hard to not notice it and it's hard to then not react to it and so reactions are actions it doesn't matter why you're offering the vibration you are you're offering the vibration you are and the universe is going to react to the vibration that you're offering so it sort of looks like this it feels a little futile and scary to some people who are only listening this far into the conversation because it feels like so if someone behaves in a certain way and you react to it and because you've reacted to it now you're having the same experience but there is another way of going about this because you don't need to conditionally react to anything you can wake up in the morning when you are at your point of least momentum and you can deliberately choose good feeling thoughts until that momentum takes you into the receptive mode and now you're rendezvousing with your inner being. Now you're rendezvousing with other happy people, you see. The whole point of talking about unconditional love 
is to say don't let the conditions control your response and the only way that you can keep conditions from controlling your response is by getting your action going before your reaction you follow that if you've got a strong good feeling vibration going and you meet up with somebody who doesn't you're not going to have the same reaction to them as you would if you didn't have your strong good feeling vibration going I think where I'm getting concerned I want to have unconditional love for my niece but when I come home and the house is filled with smoke because she left the food on the stove and it charred in the pan and didn't open a window to get the smoke out I start getting concerned that I have a fire hazard I'm dealing with and then I'm walk into the house the next day and I wasn't able to successfully get rid of the smoke smell so it's a reminder that so I'm part of me is wondering is there a point where you just say maybe you should move out you know um, so that I have the ease with my home and then I feel like I'm a failure because well maybe it will come to that but the thing is if from that concern you move out then from that receiving mode of concern how it plays out will not be pleasing mm -hmm. if you're on the high-flying disc if you're going to something rather than running from something you're in an entirely different frequency and the way it plays out is entirely different mm -hmm. some years ago we were visiting with a woman she was a physician and so was her husband and they lived out in the desert and they had a private plane and they were in their private plane often and they had a young girl she was not quite a teenager and another young boy who was still in grade school but all of them as a family were listening to Abraham recordings and they were reveling in the newfound knowledge that they create their own reality one day they came in for a landing and misunderstood the direction of the wind and landed from the wrong direction and their plane flipped over and caught fire they weren't hurt badly some minor burns they got out of the wreckage and now this mother is back in the hot seat wanting to find words from us that she could soothe her children because they're upset if we create our own reality how did that happen and we said to her hardly anybody walks away from plane crashes but you did from your high flying disc you had an experience but your reaction to it is what matters now you see what we're getting at don't argue for your limitations and don't beat up on yourself for having negative emotion no one wants their house to be full of smoke but don't get carried away with it either don't react to it in a way that makes it worse okay. and here's the bottom line in all of this and this is a wonderful leading edge discussion it's impossible not to react to something and make it worse if you're in the vicinity of what happened as you walk in in that vibration of course you're gonna have that react if you walk in you're flying high you're feeling good you know you have well-being you know that well-being abounds and that happens you open a window and you don't make a big deal about it but if you're not then one thought leads to another I could die in my sleep or yeah. she could be so responsible that she could do this or this or this or this or this or this or this when the fact of it is nothing like that has happened and the likelihood of it happening has more to do with your reaction mm -hmm. than it does with anything else now of course we don't think that you should put up with unwanted things we don't think that if there's a lot of things that are going on that are unpleasant to you we would move out but we wouldn't move out from fear of what's happening and we wouldn't move out from disgust of what's happening and we wouldn't move out in anger we would get into our high flying disc and let our inner being call us to what's next it's my home so the question is if you say you'd be better off finding another place and I agree I, I appreciate it totally. but you see you can't find that high flying disc no, where you encourage her into something that is going to be in the long run more satisfying to her because you've got this attitude that I'm throwing her out yeah you can't have this attitude that I'm throwing her out at the same time that you're on your high flying disc yeah. so it takes a little work we know this isn't the easiest thing to do we're talking about what you're reacting to reactions are the most important conversation law of attraction the words or the concept of law of attraction and the concept of reaction 
are the same, aren't they? <laughs> because I cannot react outside the boundaries of my active beliefs. That's such a powerful statement. I cannot respond, nor can the universe respond to me outside of the boundaries of my active belief. So you've got to find some positive aspects about your situation. And sometimes when we counsel or coach people like this, they think that we're trying to get you to make lists of positive aspects about your niece so that she will change. No, we want you to make positive aspects about your niece so that you can be in the receptive mode and know what to do. Okay. The likelihood of her changing isn't, but there are so many aspects about her that are positive. Mm -hmm. So if everything that we talk about, no matter what it is, if the answer is always get in the receptive mode, and if you notice, that is always the answer, get in the receptive mode, that's always the answer, get in the receptive mode, then should there be a question about, well, should I move out or not? No, get in the receptive mode. Well, but Abraham, should I move out or should I ask her to move out? Get in the receptive mode. Abraham, you must not be hearing my question. Should I stay or go? Should I ask her to stay or go? Get in the receptive mode. Get in the receptive mode. Get in the receptive mode and then ask that question. Get in the receptive mode. That question has already been asked and it's already been answered, but you can't receive because... Tell us, why haven't you already asked her to move out? Well, I believe that there was benefit that she was receiving by being there because it was a, what else? a, sta yeah. a stable what else? environment. What else? And Not that stable. Now I'm feeling less comfortable when I think my house is going to burn down. Yeah, it's not that you know. stable of an environment. But what no. else? What is another reason that you haven't yet asked her to move out? She has no place else to go. She has no place else to go. She doesn't make very much money. So how's that? So isn't that interesting? You're reacting to the life that she presents to you. And the life that she presents to you is one of sort of chaos, one of not really trying very hard, one of not supporting herself well. And so she's caused you to believe negatively about her by the way she behaves. Mm -hmm. So you're reacting to the way she presents herself, but you could react to what her inner being knows about her. You could react to the hopes and dreams that she has in her vortex. You could be reacting to a different part of her when you're in the receptive mode. You see what we're getting at? She wants to be a portrait artist and I have really tried to support that. There's a place for artists that's near where I live. And it's one of the reasons she wanted to be where I am. And there are times- But you see, you can find all kinds of justifications for things to go the way they go in order to support your beliefs. This is the thing that we really want you to hear. Your strongest belief, and no one would, wonder why your strongest belief is in her not success rather than in her success and so from that belief from that vantage point everything that you're inspired to is counterproductive to your receptive mode can you hear what we're getting at from what you're observing and your reaction to what you're observing it puts you in a chronic vibration that doesn't allow anything other than things like that to be the experience so most people would not be as patient as you've been. They would make a decision, but it still wouldn't end there. Yeah. In other words, you'd still be aware of her and then you'd feel guilty about what comes next and worried about what comes next. And chances are she'd move right back in and the whole thing would start over again. So rather than reacting to what is, you want to figure out how to be a reactor to well-being, how to be a reactor to source energy, how to be a reactor to what her inner being knows about her, which means you've got to take your attention off of what is in order to even get there. Well, there's a case to be made. Maybe that was a receptive mode conversation. I want to believe in her ability, but I can't do it when she is stumbling and bumbling and fumbling right in front of me. So maybe some space between us would give me a better opportunity to believe in her the way her inner being believes in her. And maybe I could be like a satellite dish that beams the signal in a little bit stronger. She's easier to love from a distance. Yes, that's true. She's easier to love from a distance. And there are all kinds of layers of things. What's your belief? Do you believe that it is your responsibility to take care of people who cannot take care of themselves? That's a belief that most humans still have, even though your inner being is wanting you to promote their independence. Your inner being is not wanting you to cut them off. Your inner being is wanting you to promote their connection to the real stream of what they're looking for.